My guest today is Nayana Purnell. Nayana, how are you today? Hi, David. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. Did I say your name correctly? You did an awesome job. Thank you. No one ever gets my name correct. Thank you. Where are you calling us from? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a great city. My very first consulting job was in Philadelphia. I worked for a company called David's Bridal. And they were out uh, within Bryn Mawr, I think, somewhere in the suburbs. And I flew out there for like two months and just worked on their Fox Pro systems. Oh, wow. 20, 25 years ago. <laughs> oh, wow. That's how old I'm <laughs> now, now, you're, <laughs> now you're making me sad. <laughs> uh, so I'm, uh, and I understand that. Uh, oh, so tell me, what, what do you do for a living today? So I am actually a consultant. Oh. <laughs> I'm a technical consultant. Um, I am a software engineer. I do currently Salesforce admin develop, slash development work. I have kind of a future role. Uh-huh. And I understand that you weren't always a consultant or a software engineer. This is a new thing for you, a relatively new thing. Correct. Um, originally, I was a Spanish teacher. So I have a dual master's degree in special education and Spanish. So for six years, I taught K through 12 in various schools in Philadelphia as a Spanish instructor. Um, and uh, how long ago did you decide that uh, you wanted to make a career change? So it's about three. It's been about three years now. So it was like ten, but it's been three years. What motivated that? Were you were you trying to move away from education, or are you moving towards computer science, or a combination of the two? So a fun story for me is that with technology, um, I thought I was an engineer before I was an engineer. So I say all that to say, for one, I went to Temple University. And in undergrad, one of the expectations is that you complete a science. Well, I wasn't great at physics. Um, you don't have to do just regular science. You could do computer science. So our like preliminary science courses were um, Microsoft, the whole suite. So we did Office, Word, Excel. But then we also did Dreamweaver. And oh, yeah. that was like, that would fulfill my criterion to get my science credit. So I did that. Those skills that I utilized, I used, utilized them in internships. It was very helpful in my career. And then one day an opportunity came along. A friend of mine was doing a conference and they said, hey, we need people who could, we need someone to volunteer to build our site. So in my mind, I'm like, Dreamweaver, you had to do that. You're an expert. You had to pass. <laughs> so I thought I knew what I was doing. So I agreed. They were. That, now you sound like a consultant. Yes, I've done that <laughs> once. I'm an expert. Exactly. Hire me. <laughs> right. It, exactly. I know how to do this. So we they were using um a webs.com like they were using like a GoDaddy, you know the you know all those uh sources that comp companies use or people use um consumers use so i was doing the point and click and i thought that i was killing it i'm like yeah i have this conference website up i'm giving them all their deliverables creating content i thought i was an engineer and then I started doing more research. Um, an opportunity had come up. I learned about a meetup in the area where women were, it was a part of a nonprofit organization where women were learning how to code uh, for $20, $50. That's cheap. Yeah. So, um, it wasn't a girl develop it, was it? It was. It oh, was. I love them. I've done a lot of work with them. Right. So one of my alumna, I always talk about her. Her name is Yasmin Mustafa. She was the founding um, leader in Philadelphia. And she also was an alumna at Temple. So she shared the experience, um, her experience with um, being a part of Girl Development. She had started her own organization so or founded her own company. So at a, that point in my life, I knew that I didn't want to be a teacher anymore. I had changed careers. And as we talked earlier, like you, similar to you, I had just turned 30. I had already fulfilled the, my goals in getting the master's degree. I had already, you know, I was starting to be more established in my career. And then I was like, um, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? Because in my mind, I'm already an engineer. I'm already killing it, making these point and click websites. Let's change careers. So I did all this research. And 
you know, the one thing that people say is you can be a developer in three months, go to a boot camp. You're going to make 60,000 on up six figures. I was like three months on summer break, six figures. It sounds too good to be true. Exactly. I was like, (laughs) what did I say? (laughs) Cha-ching. So I started looking for boot camps. I started doing research and, um, I knocked on the door of a startup and and I didn't even know, I didn't know the things of startups. I didn't know the terminologies and all of that. I just knew I had a passion. I wanted to do engineering and I was going to get the experience. So I found the first online program. I did that and I'm like, I need people. So I found the startup and I convinced them to let me, I said, Hey, I knocked on their door. I said, Hey, you know, I'm on my summer break. Do you need an intern? Can I help you in any way? And they said, sh- you know, sure, you have a question. Wow. Good deal. Did they, or did they uh, pay you? <laughs> so that, at first, I wasn't going to take the internship because that was my question. I'm like, hey, how much are you going to pay someone if they roll in from internship to career? And they said, based on the salary that I made as a teacher, they couldn't afford me. So what happened was, I went to a, a big startup event, like, I don't know, in the summertime, like a hiring startup. Like a career hiring fair. Event. Yeah. Um, it was a, a career fair or hiring event. And I saw the founder again. And I didn't know he was the founder because there were two founders. And he's like, hey, I said, hey, you look familiar. I met you. And he's like, oh, yeah, you came to my you came to my office. Come back on Monday. We're starting the internship on Monday. So in my mind, I'm like, second time around, what's the likelihood? I knocked on their door. Now they're telling me to come to theirs. Okay. Go for it. So, so that, I was just, that was just for an internship. Just to get your that foot was just for an internship. Okay. And what ended up happening was. I started bringing other people along. So I brought a friend of mine on who had went to a boot camp that summer and other people were along. Right. So other people were along. And then I started asking questions. So I started learning more. And I'm like, I asked them, hey, could you pay us? So they told us we can't necessarily afford you all, but we'll pay you $500 a month. And I'm like, $500 a month? And I'm like, okay, well, I get a salary in the summer. So $500 a month is not bad. So I did it those three, those three months. And I resigned from teaching when I knew the school year was going to go in. Because I'm like, this is amazing. Um, I would come home. My husband would say, Nayana, you were talking in your sleep. You were problem solving. So <laughs> I was really deep into this. You know, I, I fried my MacBook. I'm learning pseudo and the terminal. Because I didn't know, they're not telling you that, hey, you're not just developing. You need to know the command line. You need to know the repositories. You need to know, you know, the text editor. There were so many moving pieces. And I don't know about you and your experience, but in my experience, it was intimidating to be 30, even though 30 is young, to be around other younger people who are learning the code. They're still in college in their undergrad and I'm in my, you know, post master's degree, you know, it was intimidating and trying to keep up with them. And they're speaking all this cool lingo and I don't know. And I'm a teacher, I'm technical. So when they say, well, how did you get there? And I'm befuddled and I can't say it. I'm like, oh, I don't like this. So when the internship was over, I said, you know what? I'm going back to school. So I went back and I went to a local community college and online program um, to do software engineering. So I went and got a software engineering suit. Um, and I haven't looked back. It hasn't been easy, but I haven't looked back since I left that internship. So what, uh, what kind of tools are you using right now? What kind of languages and uh, projects are you building? Right now, I'm doing JavaScript. Mm-hmm. Um, this summer, I was working on learning Python. So one of the things I'll, I'll share with you, David, my philosophy has changed over time, where in the beginning... In the beginning, I was looking to learn. I wanted to learn just JavaScript. In school, I learned Java and I learned Linux and I learned C++. And what happened was my thought process is how can I be excellent at my craft? And as I started doing more research, another more senior developer said, hey, developers are problem solvers. So I said, 
how am I going to solve this problem of being a stronger developer? So I started going this summer into Python. I'm like, some developers say they start with that because the syntax is more grammatically um, close to English. So I was doing JavaScript. I've done, um, as I said, um, Python. And then with Salesforce, that's doing Apex code, which is in Java. And then now I'm lear- I was learning th- recently the Blazor app, which is, you know, web and components. But that's, I saw .NET, C Sharp. Yep. So I guess I want to say to you, I'm an expert at solving the problem more than I am focused on a special language. Okay, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I actually wrote a blog post about this years ago that uh, my job isn't to be a technologist. My job is to solve problems, solve business problems. It's just that technology tends to be one of the strong tools in my toolkit. And so I, I tend to use software development, but not always. I maybe uh, somebody will come up with a problem and I'll say, you know what, you can solve this without technology if you just, uh, you know, improve this communication or change the way your workflow is working, things like that. Um, what was, I think, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. No, I mean, just to follow up with what you're saying, that is something that I've learned, right? Like during this last um, sprint for me, I just first, when I first started, I was like, oh my, a developer is a researcher. But then I realized uh, a developer is a researcher, a tester, a documenter. We're a little, it's like, it's it's starting to become synonymous to teaching where you have to do everything as a teacher. I'm feeling that way as a developer. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Tell me about um, this transition. How how much of the skills that you had to, to build as a teacher are you using now as a software developer? I use everything. I want to tell you that this has been, this is my superpower. And I say that because for starters, being able to communicate is a big one because now you're dealing with people who don't always understand technical terminology. So to be able to speak, maybe I have to speak with analogies to explain something in a way that they can understand it. Um, Being able to identify being very specific, I'm learning that other engineers, I'm wordy. They want to know to the point. So to the point, that means I have to use very technical terms to translate that to my peers. Um, so my communication has been a winning. You know, another piece is, as I stated before, documenting. Um, as a teacher, you have to constantly write. <laughs> you constantly have to um, communicate orally, but you have to do it written. So I have to provide that for anyone who's coming after me. The other piece that I find myself having to do um, is not only communicating and sharing information, but also being goal oriented. So a lot of times, even though I'm still junior, I think about as a teacher, I had to write, let's say you have to write a lesson plan, right? In a lesson plan, you have to think about your goal at mind, your objective, and so on and so forth. That's the same way you write code. What are we trying to achieve? What is our end game? And from there, we're going to chunk it, which is your main idea, or, you know, it's breaking things down. So a lot of the things that I've done, it just re, I just reapply it to tech. What do you think was the hardest part of this transition? Um, I still feel it's still currently the hardest part. Um, it has been getting the role that I fully desire. Um, I think that it has been very difficult to translate um, my capabilities because for one, as a teacher, a teacher has to use analytical and critical thinking skills, but how we share that information is different um, in terms of, let's say your interview process, that's been a biggie for me, your interview process, And then being able to translate, like you just asked me, showing that my skills are an asset to anything that I do, because a lot of times people only want to know, how can you code? Well, can you code? That's it. And a lot of times there's a mix. There's this mixed statements I hear. Sometimes hiring managers and people say, all I need is someone who's passionate. I can teach you how to code. But then other times when you go into the room, they say, okay, now show me how you code. Um, 
And over time, I'm learning they're not, you know, they're saying it's not how you code, articulate how you think in the process. So to me, the biggest struggle has been learning the pro- learning this whole process as an engineer. And what I don't know about other engineers, but what I feel is an engineer engineers everything. You even engineer your job. Like you literally have to problem solve everything you do. Did you have any help from others? Did you have uh, people mentoring you as you made this transition? I think that's an excellent question. Um, I do. I've had, I have mentors, I have sponsors. And and, and what I mean by that, um, it didn't always start out like that. Um, What I have, what I had decided was in the beginning, when I first took my first role um, as a consultant, I was doing technical roles, but I wasn't always hands deep into the code the way I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And because I wasn't at first, I started going to conferences. I started Mm -hmm. volunteering at conferences. I started volunteering to be organizers at conferences because I knew, hey, you know, I'm not making what I want to make, but I can get into a conference for free for volunteering. And when I would get into the conferences, I would meet people. Um, One of the biggest reasons that I went to the college was so that I could have a network behind me. So I went, I tapped into Temple University and I got a mentor. Anytime I would see mentorship programs, I would, I would be a part of it. Um, Some of those conferences I've discussed with you, they have mentorship programs. So like, I'll be going in September to Grace Hopper Conference. They Ooh, literally is that have, is that going to happen? Yes. Well, it's going to be virtual, only okay. virtual. But they offer mentorship programs. There's another organization that is a subset of um, of Grace Hopper. It's called Sisters S Y S C E R S, and that's how I found out about a Python group. Right? Like, there's all these organizations that are out there. You just have to tapped into them. And another thing that I did to kind of build the support, I use Twitter. Twitter mm-hmm. Twitter, and LinkedIn were big. That's great. I, I actually, I'm sentimental about this because I love conferences and I miss going to conferences. I've been to a lot of them, both as an attendee and yeah. as a speaker. Um, but soon, next year probably. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually trying to figure out how to kind of adapt to this ordeal because Everybody Grace Hopper is big. Yeah, yeah. it's really big. Yeah. Do you think um, your experience was in any way different because you're a woman of color than it would be for me, for example? I'm so glad that you asked that. I'm so glad. I do. I, I like it, it, it didn't even dawn on me. So when I started talking to you earlier, I discussed with you about the three months deal. I said to you that when I read those articles that people said that they were able to get roles after three months. But the thing about that is I never looked at their their nationality. I didn't look at their socioeconomic backgrounds. And I'm saying that to you because I read I read in, in a lot of instances where people will say, oh well, a couple of things. One, sometimes people just move to Silicon Valley. And the data already says that women of color, black women specifically, aren't being hired in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. I've gone to job interviews where I was told that everything that I did was perfect, but yet not enough. I just told you I have two master's degrees. I have a bachelor's degree and I have a certification in software engineering. And I've gone to interviews where they've told me that that wasn't enough. I've mentioned to you the idea that I said to you that um, the reason that I went back was because everything that I've ever said a lot of times is questioned. Everything that I say, it's, it's, it never goes for face value. Um, I, I just, I, I'm saying to you that this journey I know has not been easy. Um, and I do believe that it's because I'm a woman of color. Um, I don't, when we hear about people saying, hey, um, I could call my uncle or my friend and they could give me a role. I've never experienced that before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That's great insight. I I think um, you don't have that out of the gate, but going to these conferences and making and networking that way 
that will pay off down the future as you're meeting people, some of even the non mentors, just making those right. connections. That, that is, and, and it's, it, it's interesting because I, I went through a similar journey uh, myself. I told you before we started recording that I changed careers. I was a, a, a financial analyst and I was a I have a degree in biochemistry, nothing to do with computer science. And I was about 30 years old, I changed, but uh, everybody's journey is very different. I'm, I'm, it's fascinating to hear yours. I think that the other piece, there's a couple of things, right? So like, I think, as I said to you, I'm engineering my role. And I think about in terms of strategy, it didn't dawn on me till May that to be an engineer, to, to be in tech, you don't necessarily have to be an engineer. Um, you could enter tech, you can enter tech, like how I said, I was, a, I was started out as a technical analyst and I did different roles. Mm. I asked, I asked, right? Like all you can do is ask and all they can tell you is no. So what I do is I just try, I ask, Hey, can I try this out? Or as I said to you, when I was volunteering for some of the organ conferences, like Liberty GS is a great example where I'm an organizer, but I, I, I literally built the website with a team of more senior developers. So when I needed to go in, we use Google, we use Firebase on the back end. I didn't even, I didn't know how to do, I, I knew how to create a method from Java, but the key order pairs, there are certain things that sometimes don't connect. That hands-on experience, I was able to get that in ways that I wasn't able to get in you know, on the job. So it's almost like you have to be creative in how you create your opportunities and don't take no for an answer. And then the other thing that I started learning, most people don't know this, which is that you can go into an organization who who will, they will train their developers, right? They're, they have programs where they're looking for people from other backgrounds, get into an organization with another, with something different. And then migrate into that role like how you just said you were doing financial analysts there are companies that have consultants and developers yeah uh i'm glad i'm not doing that anymore this is way more fun by the way <laughs> i agree <laughs> uh we're just about out of time tell me is what kind of advice would you give someone else who's considering a career change into it i say don't give up right like i realized that this is way bigger than just you and I feel like this experience the reason why I haven't given up is because I'm not there's going to be other women and I'm not the only other woman I have a husband I have children I have a career and that hasn't stopped me from my goals and my experience text is very helpful right we help each other out so my experience is going to help someone else tremendously down the line so all the work I'm doing, it'll pay back its dividends down the line. It's okay. Don't give up. Excellent. Nayana, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Make friends and be a friend during your journey in technology.